there are many top UK universities that do not require English proficiency tests from many countries and likely your country is one of them. So this video is going to save you some money if you are planning on applying for a master's degree in the UK and the purpose of this video is to incentivize you, show you some of these top universities they are not just obscure universities and encourage you to search out others that might be suitable for you. So if this interests you, stick around, hit the subscribe button and let's dive right into it. This is the University of St. Andrews. The University of St. Andrews is in Scotland, actually the oldest university in Scotland. And uh, this is the English requirements for postgraduate students uh, page. All right. So what I want you to notice here, first and foremost, is that this is one of um, the top 100 universities in the world, according to World uh, QS uh, University Ranking and one of the top five actually in the UK. Now, look at this statement here. English language requirement for postgraduate students. So you have, um, you should not need to provide an English language test score to evidence your English language ability if one of the following applies, okay? So one of them is you have a UK degree that is taught in English, of course you don't have that. If you're watching my video, likely you don't have that. But this is what is of interest to me. Degree from countries where English has official status. All right, so let's open that and find your country. So here I'll be finding Nigeria. All right. You see many countries, many African countries. Actually, you see in Ghana, here you see in Kenya. But then here you have it, Nigeria. So if you have... An undergraduate, an undergraduate or a postgraduate degree that is UK equivalent taught in English in any of these countries of which you've seen Nigeria in it, you do not need to provide additional evidence of your English language proficiency. So if you are, are intending to apply to this university and you are writing an English test, you are wasting your money, that is the meaning. And then of course, because these are top schools, which is what I'm showing in this video, you will wonder why you go applying for other schools that will require you to write IELTS, which um, should not be useful for someone who has undergone um, a full training, undergraduate or postgraduate studies, or bulk of your education, if not all of your education, in English language. So that is that for University of St. Andrews. This is University of Bristol. And uh, for University of Bristol, still one of the top 100 universities in the world. And um, of course, one of the top in the UK. The place they bragged about being uh, one in the top 10. So where there's a ranking that says otherwise, I'll just show you. However, for Bristol, um, most of the postgraduate um, courses, um, they require different levels of English uh, proficiency and they grade them here into profiles A, B, C, D, E down to H and international program. Now, how it works is that actually most of these uh, profiles will have a similar thing but there are some modifications so when you choose your masters you have to um, take note of the profile level of um, english proficiency required and how to satisfy it um, so but most of the, the likelihood that you're going to pick a masters that will um, not require an english test is very high especially if you're from nigeria so i'll pick one from a to probably a for e we give us uh, fairly the same thing. So I'm going to just pick one and uh, let me pick E. All right. So unless uh, specifically stated, the information below details the. Okay. I don't need to read that to you. But what I need to read to you is how you can satisfy this profile. One is to be a national of an English speaking country, um, which maybe you're not likely if you're watching this video. And then studying or you have studied in an English speaking country or institution. That is what's important to us. So what are the recognized English speaking countries? So the beautiful thing about uh, Bristol is again that they recognize 
your country don't know the country you're from but then i'm assuming for nigerians okay recognize uh, your country as an english speaking country because english is actually nigeria's official language so in that case if you have uh, been able to study and obtain a degree or even complete high school even in an english speaking country okay you will be exempt from an english test so but then of course with no high school i'm i'm targeting here you have completed an undergraduate degree in english in nigeria and you are applying to university of bristol the chances of you picking a course that will require you to do an english test is very minimal so you can take your time go to the website and check on the different uh, profiles here and also pick a course and look at the profile required of you so but that is bristol and again you'll be wasting your money if you're writing ielts or any english test if you intend to apply to bristol especially without checking which profile your mscd um, course fits into this is UCL, one of the top universities. Of course, this is the, uh, should I call it the bragging page, first in research and it's in the world, world QS ranking of 2022. But I'll quickly go to the English requirement, which is my area of interest in this video. Now, English language requirement, who does not need to prove their knowledge of English? Of course, those who are in these countries or from these countries, and these are the countries in the UK via list. So. I will skip that. Who does need to prove? Will need to prove um, your English language proficiency in three ways: education, obtaining a qualification in English, your work experience. Another way you can do that, of course, is the English language qualification that I'm trying to discourage you from writing uh, if you don't need it. So, education, which leads on academic qualification, and they are looking at actually a, com a continuous 12 months academic education. All right. So of course, most of you have already more than 12 months. And then this must be in a country that UCL classifies as majority English speaking country. So that's our place of interest. Is your country classified as majority English speaking country? This is different from the UKVI list, okay, of English speaking countries or so. So let me go down and get that for you. So you're saying at least three years of undergraduate study or one year progress study is also fine, but this is for Chinese, I think, yeah, for Chinese um, students. So let's go down. Yeah. Countries you see are considered as majority English speaking. Span this and you can find your country here most likely. The country of reference for this video is Nigeria. So let me get that. Here it is. So you can apply for UCO without having to take an English test and expect an admission as you can for most other top UK universities. Right, this is Imperial College London, okay, and uh, this is the English language requirement page. Let me make that border if I can, yeah. So you will see that uh, they group the requirements into standard or higher and you, you will know which one is required of you in the course page of the postgraduate um, degree you're applying for but uh, how you can satisfy these apart from of course those who are um, uk citizens or schooled in some of these countries listed here um, australia ghana just this is even less than the uk vi list actually so they removed some but of course, uh, the people I'm making this video for are not in this list. So I'll go down to how you can satisfy the standard or higher criteria using um, some qualifications that is not adult. Okay. So accepted English language test and qualification. Say so you only need to meet the relevant standard in one of the following. So you have your Duolingo. IELTS and the rest of them accepted English qualification. So let me go to what might surprise you, and that is the very last thing on this list West African College um, Examination Council. Sorry, WAIC. Yeah, so they accept WAIC to satisfy for both standard and higher uh, criteria for English language. So 
basically means it can go for most any courses i've actually looked at the mph and then the translational neuroscience so a postgraduate degree here and both of them require the higher college um, standard for english and they are they are telling you that if you have level four of english in work you actually satisfy level four is c4 in work so um, Alex, you're doing the English test for something else. The chances are that you don't need an English test if you're applying for this university. And of course, it is one of the top 10 in the UK, one of the top in the world. There could be many other reasons why you require an English test. It could be visa requirement or whatever. But if your main reason is admission, your chances are that you do not need one and you can save yourself some money just by following the information on this video or making some more research on your own so that's the end of the video if it is helpful give it a thumbs up and if it is not you can give it a thumbs down or comment below and tell me what i should do right and of course subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of my video that'll be all for now have a good one